Debriefing doesn't need to be hard. Many people when they're starting out and even some of us with experience find it to be challenging over time. Let's try to think about how can we make debriefing more effective? How can we make debriefing easier for us? In this session, I'm going to talk about five pearls for effective debriefing. Five pearls of debriefing. One, before you begin, attend to learner readiness. Before you begin, ensuring the emotional readiness of the learners will be a huge benefit. Learning during a debriefing can be enhanced by reducing distractions. Such distractions can occur from many possible origins. If learners are particularly stressed or angry, or perhaps after a simulation, it is best to let them process that emotion or otherwise emotionally and mentally prepare themselves to be able to focus on the content of the debriefing. So taking a few minutes to observe or perhaps even directly asking, are you ready, may go a long way. Another tool that I use after a stressful simulation is just to acknowledge that there may be stress with a statement such as, wow, that looks stressful. Are you guys ready to talk about it? Two, during the debriefing, listen to the learners, analyze their thoughts and understanding. A structured debriefing should provide the opportunity to listen to the learners. This allows the debriefer to analyze if the learners have a command of the facts and understanding of the intended learning associated with the simulation. It is easy to become impatient with the process and start telling the learners what they need to know. Once this occurs, it is difficult to assess what the learners do know and understand. As you listen to learners during the debriefing, think about what you need to ask next or where you need to take the conversation to be able to analyze the next area of content you want to explore during the debriefing. So another tip is shift your thoughts to how can I discover if my learners know, as opposed to the normal transmittal of information that comes from thinking, I need to tell them X, Y, and Z so that they understand. Three, what went right? is as important as what went wrong. There is a saying that the negative screams and the positive whispers. This could not be truer when it comes to debriefing. It is far easier to remember what people did wrong during a scenario than what they did right. But if you sit back and think about it, they are equally as important. Learners leaving a debriefing, understanding that they did something correctly and why it was correct, paired with an understanding of what they did wrong and why it was wrong is critically important for improvement to occur. If the right things are not debriefed, it may be that they were done out of habit or luck and the learners don't understand it at all. Or worse yet, they could be perceived as unimportant. So a good tip is to jot down some notes of the things that were done correctly during the simulation Trust me, you'll remember all of those things which were wrong. They'll be screaming. Four, keep the debriefing focused. <clears throat> a challenge for anyone conducting a debriefing is to keep things focused. Learners love to talk about what learners love to talk about. However, it's important as the facilitators of the conversation, that we have the learners talking about what they need to be talking about. What learners need to be talking about should be driven by the learning objectives of the scenario. This direction needs to come from the debriefer. There is a delicate relationship that exists between the learners and the debriefer, so carefully thinking about how to maintain that, but being able to nudge the conversation back to the right pathway is a skill worth concentrating on. A tip is to develop some scripts that you are comfortable using when such nudging needs to occur. Consider this example. 
I agree that the exact dose of medications is critically important. But for this scenario and debriefing, we're tasked with focusing on the effectiveness of the communications within the team. So who can give me an example of effective communication that occurred during this scenario? Last, but not least, bring out summary take home points. Every simulation has a plethora of opportunities for learning. It's the job of the debriefer to ensure that the primary learning objectives of the simulation are covered. During complicated cases or cases involving multiple learning objectives, it is possible to cover a lot of ground along with many topics and facts during the time you're analyzing the learner's grasp of the content. It is important to close with summary points that are critical take home messages. This can be challenging for some and often turns into a mini lecture. And remember, when you start lecturing to the learners, you are sacrificing the ability to ensure understanding where the learner is at that point in time. Beginning the wrap up of the debriefing by asking learners to give one or two things they think went well during the scenario, along with that which they would change next time can be an effective probe into the understanding that learners take away from the big learning messages that you want them to take away from the scenario. It also serves as a time that allows you to shape the discussion or perhaps nudge the discussion with further questions that drive home the intended takeaway points. Always think to yourself, what are the two or three things that I want them to remember about this experience a month from now? Well, that's about all. Remember, debriefing gets better with practice, feedback, and experience. So get out there, debrief, get some feedback, and debrief again. Until next time, happy simulating.